SteelSeries just announced two brand new microphones and an update to one of the best free softwares that every streamer should be using right now. Today we're going to look at both the Alias and the Alias Pro as well as break down Sonar for streamers and explain why I am so annoyed that I spent 800 bucks when I started streaming so that I could do what is now free for all of you guys. This video is recorded on the Alias Pro. You guys know my rules. I won't tell you if I like it or if I think you should buy it. Instead, I'll use the microphone, I'll tell you about them, I'll give you my first impressions and then then I'll let you make up your own mind on if you like the sound. Now let's talk about the microphone before we get into Sonar for streamers and why you should download it today. So the Alias and the Alias Pro, one is USB and the other is XLR. But SteelSeries has made a brilliant choice here already, specifically with their XLR microphone. You see, they've included an interface or mixer in the box. This means nobody is gonna make the mistake that so many streamers do, and that is buying a microphone, going home and realizing, Ah, you can't use it because you need to buy a Focusrite, a GoXLR, Bridgecast, you name it. There are so many options out there, but you won't need to worry about it because everything for this microphone is in the box. So two different microphones, but what do they have in common? Well, they're both condenser microphones, not dynamic. So they're much more sensitive. They'll give you a more natural sound, but they'll also pick up more background noise compared to the dynamic microphones like the Samson Q2U. They're both cardioid, so they capture sound right out of the front and not all around them like an omnidirectional mic. And and they both have these cute little RGBs to show when you're muted and the levels that you're currently hitting. For the USB one, all the RGBs are on the front with a little touch mute button right here, and the XLR version is on the mixer that'll sit on your desk. They both come with the exact same stand, which has amazing build quality. It's incredibly solid and heavy, and it can detach to go on a microphone arm with a standard thread. But this is where I hit my first snag. First, I tried putting this microphone on my Rode PSA One Plus, but due to the way the shock mount is built, I couldn't rotate the microphone easily to get a better angle on my mouth. So instead, I swapped it onto my Thronmax Low Profile, which has a swivel head, and that has worked much better. This isn't a major issue, it's just something to be aware of during setup. Now, the price range for this starts at around $275 redos, that's Australian dollars, or $179 USD for the USB version, and $500 redos, or $329 USD for the XLR version. So these aren't cheap microphones. I wouldn't consider them budget options personally. I would consider these more prosumer stage microphones. They sit alongside the Wave 3 or the Rode XDM100 and are more aimed towards streamers who are earning a little bit of money and are able to reinvest it, but can't afford a full $800 XLR setup. Wait, I guess this is a full XLR setup technically. Speaking of setting the mics up, I will say I did struggle a bit. So let's move on to the free software Sonar and why it's awesome before I talk about the snag that I hit. Sonar for streamers was incredibly easy and fast to get downloaded, installed, and it is probably the most straightforward virtual mixer that I've worked with. It blows something like voice meter out of the water in terms of ease of use. But for those who don't understand, what is a virtual mixer? Essentially, Sonar will create a series of virtual inputs and outputs. You can see them here. Here, game, chat, media, aux, and mic. These inputs and outputs allow you to route certain programs that make sound on your computer, such as Spotify, Google Chrome, games, to certain channels where you can level them all individually to be louder or quieter. For example, in the past, when using OBS, most of you simply set up two audio sources, your microphone, which is pretty self-explanatory, and your desktop audio, which captures any other sound that goes through your PC and mushes them all together for output. This means that you need to level your game, your music, your Discord, and everything else into individually, which is tedious, slow, and it often results in all of your audio being jumbled together and hard to distinguish for your viewers. But with Sonar, I can send my game to my game channel, I can send my Discord to my chat channel, and I can send my music to my media channel, and obviously my mic to my mic channel. And then inside just Sonar, not all the other individual programs, I can change the levels of each, and then inside OBS, I just simply add my Sonar stream mix, and all of the audio, after it's been leveled nicely, will be sent to my stream. But then Sonar takes it a further step because it has submixing, meaning I can level my audio for each individual channel and I can level it differently for myself and stream. That's what these are. The headphones are my personal mix, what I hear, and the recording signal is what the stream hears. So let's say I'm streaming Counter-Strike and I really need to hear footsteps, reloads, or the bomb being ninja planted underneath my ass. But my stream viewers really want to listen to the latest lo-fi music. Well, I can play that lo-fi for them, but make it quiet or even mute it entirely for me. This is awesome for streamers who want to carefully control their audio, but also this is particularly powerful for someone like me who is slightly deaf in one ear, aka someone who plays things far too loud. When I first started streaming, I only had two choices. Either I blow my viewers' eardrums out so that I can hear 
hear everything or I level it for them. And then I spend the entire time struggling to hear my game, my music or anything at all. So in short, sub mixing, Yes, please. But wait, there's more. I know as streamers, you're going to need to edit your streams into TikTok shorts or full YouTube videos. This means one of the most important steps is splitting your audio sources onto their own tracks. You want your mic on its own track. You want your game on its own track. You want your music on its own track. You want everything on its own track. If you don't do that, and let's say your mic and your game both go to the same track, well, that's it. You're stuck with them burnt together. You can't split them apart in the edit. So you can't edit your own voice or the game without affecting the other one. Is your voice too quiet? Well, raise it up. Oh, sorry, you've also raised up the game sound. Is your game too loud? Well, just lower it down. Oh, sorry, you've just lowered your voice as well. You can see why splitting your audio is so important. So with Sonar, you can go into OBS or Streamlabs and add one of their virtual channels directly. Let's say I add Sonar Media Channel directly. I then open my advanced audio properties and I change my tracks. I keep my stream source on track one because I want my stream to be able to hear it, but I take off all the other tracks. And then I set my media to its own track individually. Let's say track three. And I don't put it on track one so my viewers don't hear that twice. I can then do the same with any of my other virtual channels. So my game, my mic, my aux, you name it. And then when I'm done with my stream, I go inside the editing software later and I'll be given my footage with six audio tracks. Track one will be my stream mix because that's what was set up, which has everything. But then the other tracks will just be the individual channels with the individual sources I wanted by themselves. Now tools like this aren't new. Myself and many streamers bought the GoXLA for between $400 to $800 dollar-y-dos because it does this for you pretty much. And as I said, the voice meter software exists. It's just fairly clunky and it's hard to get set up or confuses a lot of new creators. Also in the past, Elgato and Rode have done their own virtual mixes as well, of course, but the problem with their software, well, is you need to use their microphones and tools with them. Sonar doesn't do that. Anyone can use this with any microphone, any headset. It will not lock you behind anything. It is a free tool that anyone can use. And you can tell I am pretty happy with this software. And that usually means that there is a big but coming. You see, I spent all day working with the USB and XLR microphones inside Sonar, and there are some really great features. For example, they have a proper 10 band equalizer, meaning you can really customize the sound of your mic to be crisp, clear, and have a lot of presence. It even comes with default presets that sound pretty good as a starting point if you're new. I'm using their default balanced EQ for this video because I felt like it gave a good example of what the audio would sound like. Oh, and remember how I mentioned Counter-Strike earlier? Well, if you open Sonar for streamers and route Counter-Strike to the game channel, you can then add a 10 band EQ to the game as well. So you can make footsteps reloading and of course ninja plants so much more pronounced in your headphones, giving you an edge over everyone else. But also, you know that flashbang sound, the high pitch whining we all hate to hear? Yeah, you can EQ that out so it's less harsh on your ears. There are heaps of other preset EQs for different games built into the tool as well. But the thing I really love about the fact you can EQ anything is it means I can EQ my Discord calls. My mates will not stop eating their microphones and it sounds awful. But that's okay because I can clean all of that up now both using the EQ and also with the Clearcast AI noise cancellation, which I am kind of in love with. It's actually on right now to cut out a massive air conditioning noise that I normally struggle to remove from my audio. You see, I live in Australia and I need that thing running 24 seven or else I die. The other tools like compressor, noise gate and noise reduction are included as well, but they took an interesting route with these. They've simplified them down. So for example, the compressor, rather than having six different sliders, they have one and you just move that till it sounds right for you. And here is the snag. Here is the big but. No, not the simplified tools. I actually understand that. They're aiming for streamers, not audio engineers. Streamers are dumb. We are. Don't try and pretend we're not. And I actually love how simple this is for beginners. No, the snag is monitoring. That's right, listening to my own voice. One of the most important parts of being a streamer is monitoring yourself without any lag so you can hear how you sound, make sure you're leveled properly, and most importantly, um, not muted like I tend to do. The issue is the moment you have any kind of lag when trying to monitor, it will make it impossible to speak. And I really mean impossible. There are entire party games built around this idea called speech jammers. Hey, future LJ here. Watching this back, I realized I explained the issues it has really badly. And because I'm being critical, I want to make sure I'm very clear. So essentially, I couldn't get lag free monitoring from Sonar. Anytime I tried to route my voice back into my own ears, it had this major delay. 
The only way I got lag-free monitoring was when I plugged my headphones directly into the Alias mics because both mics come with a monitoring port. So essentially, I then routed all of my audio in Sonar to the headphone jack on the microphone. In short, if you want to monitor your own voice while streaming, I don't think you'll be able to get lag-free monitoring in Sonar. But if your mic has a monitoring port or a headphone jack on it, then you will be able to. This isn't a deal breaker by any means, but for some streamers like myself, it's really important and I think it's something to note. The other snag I hit was actually leveling my microphone. Sonar wasn't built to level your mic. The levels you see here are the volume of the output, not the volume of the input. Sonar has no dB markers or any real indicators for if you're peaking. So really you're meant to level your microphone in the Windows settings or on the mixer that's plugged into first and then send that source to Sonar to be routed. The reason I consider this a snag is because the RGB levels on the mixer for the XLR one and on the front of the microphone for the USB one are really cool, they're neat but they're not detailed enough to accurately level your audio nicely. It would be great if Sonar had a bit more detail built into the user interface to help beginners level their microphones. Again, this isn't a massive issue. Sonar was originally built for gamers and gamers can still use all of this as well as streamers can still use all of this. I just think personally that as someone who works with new creators a lot, the thing they mess up all the time is that very first stage of leveling. And to be honest, even I struggled with it because I'm so used to things like the Go XLR or the Bridgecast, which I use these days. So I wanted to mention it. So Sonar is amazing. It's straightforward, great for controlling your audio sources for streaming or recording. The EQ, Clearcast and other effects are surprisingly powerful for free software. And depending on your experience level, you're either gonna love or hate the simplified noise reduction, gate and compressor, but it's free. So why bother complaining? Leveling, monitoring and getting set up was tricky. As for the mics, what did you think? I've used the XLR one for this entire video. How does it sound to you? Let me know in the comments your thoughts. And of course, if these microphones are out of your price range, then click this video right here. It covers the best microphones for under $90 that will still work perfectly with Sonar. See you guys next week.